I'm going to compare two robot vacuum and mops to each other that's designed to clean your house. So we'll do some cleaning tests. We'll do some obstacle avoidance and I'll show you guys a glimpse of what the app looks like. So Yuffie reached out, sent me their E25 and they wanted me to compare it to my Roborock SA Pro Ultra, which I've had for a little over a year now. And overall, the Roborock has been pretty good. But specs wise, I was intrigued because the Yuffie is better in most cases. Uh, for the specs, especially the suction power is 20,000 PA Pascals, I believe, versus the Roborock is 6,000. And both of these are premium vacuums and mops, basically. All right, so let me give you guys a glimpse of, this is the dustbin, basically, it has some filters and stuff. So most of the time, you're not gonna need to touch this because it has the base station, just like the Roborock. I'll show you guys the base station as well. And uh, you push this out for the water tank. So you could, you know, check this out, clean it and stuff if you need to. And this is basically, oh, uh, oh, uh. okay, good. I accidentally touched the buttons. Um, so you have this new roller bin style, which is actually really cool. And it's also self-cleaning while it's vacuuming, which is very different from the Roborox. So um, with the Roborox, it actually needs to go back to the base station to clean it, where this thing cleans it as it's going, which should be overall should be a lot better uh, but again we'll put it to the test to find out another advantage is this thing has two bristles one of these moves and the other advantage is that supposedly this doesn't tangle hairs and the reason is because everything kind of goes to the center i believe these spin in different directions and that's one of the things i don't like about robot vacuums is um, hair usually gets stuck to the side and i think that's true with every robot vacuum i've tested so some would get stuck worse than others. The Roborock is not terrible, but hair does move off to the side and they do need to clean it where this thing has the middle opening. So it's actually kind of um, pretty cool that it does that. And I'll show you guys what, you know, there's by, basically there's all these sensors everywhere and sensors in the front with AIC and sensors on the top. So there's a whole bunch of sensors on this thing. So let's look at the Roborock real quick. So the Roborock has the bin here, and again, most of the time you don't touch this thing. Um, and I have been using it, and this is kind of what it looks like. Um, that's, you know, so the, it pretty much what goes in here gets vacuumed out, uh, gets sucked into the dustbin when it gets to the base station, basically. Man, I'm, I'm like terrible at putting these things back. There it is, okay. So you could tell how often I open that, <laughs> uh, which is almost never. Um, so with the Roborock, again, for the cleaning part of this, it actually needs to go back to the base station. So there's more frequent trips, which is not too big of a deal if you're, you know, if you're not in a hurry for it to clean. Um, but overall, it would be nicer if it was cleaning it right here because it would also keep this thing cleaner as well. So that there is an advantage there because when the, when the dirty water is, <laughs> when I'm emptying it, it it's, it's pretty dirty. And this is what I mean with the whole... Uh, and I just cleaned this, but hair usually gets stuck here and it also gets stuck here. So this thing is something I do clean um, often enough. And this has been true for a lot of um, robot vacuums, also on the other one as well. So on actually both of these. Uh, but this thing also has a bunch of sensors. This, um, I did pay a lot of money for this Roborock. I think it was like over $1,000. I think it was like twelve, thirteen hundred on sale or something like that. But this thing also has a lot of sensors. It's actually pretty good with obstacle avoidance. Has some sensors in the front and on the top as well. So we have a series of tests, and we're going to start off with the rice test. So it's picking up some rice off the ground, off uh, vinyl flooring. Both of the robot vacuums are on vacuum and mop mode, and their vacuum settings is set on their maximum ability. So right off the bat, they both do a really good job of pretty much vacuuming the rice. So as soon as it goes through, it does look like it's pretty much picking up everything. However, when we take a closer look, I do have to give a slight edge to the Roborock. Overall, the Roborock did do a better job of picking up more rice pieces versus the Yuffie. Not that the Yuffie did a bad job, but not quite as good as the Roborock. So the next test was the mop test and I put some ketchup on the ground and Yuffie did a phenomenal job, phenomenal job. The Roborock had to do several passes. I even sent it to the base station so it could clean it and come do it again. And it was more smearing it 
more than anything else where the Eufy, because of that foam roller, it actually just did a much better job. So again, several passes with the Roborock and it just wasn't doing it. So I called the Eufy and I pretty much took care of it. So, and you could also tell when the Eufy is vacuuming, it has a more consistent, like you could see the ground is being cleaned better, I should say. And um, because that foam roller actually does make a biggest difference. That's really the biggest difference between these robot vacuums. So the next test is the obstacle avoidance test. So I put a sandal, socks, and a power wire to see, a, a, an AC adapter, I should say, on the ground to see if it's going to avoid stuff. And they both did a really good job avoid, of, of avoiding stuff. And Roborocks, generally speaking, they do a really good job of not hitting things. Um, so I was like, if I was honestly thinking the Roborock would have won this competition, but it looks like it was a tie. The Eufy also did a really good job of not hitting things. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. If you guys pay attention to the ground right here, when the Eufy does a pass, it looks like it does a much better job of mopping. It's more consistent, uh, off the floor. So that's basically, um, but obstacle avoidance, I would say they're pretty much a tie in terms of not hitting things. They both do a really good job of not hitting things. They also both do a really good job of not falling. So this is the only place in my home where it's kind of like a, uh, a, f a different floor and they both go to the edge and they both don't fall. So in fact, I let them up there for at least five to 10 minutes and both of them did not fall. So they both will not fall if you have a second floor, if it should detect the stairs in generally speaking. And then they both have this pretty much that the foam roller on the Eufy, you can actually see that it, it goes up once it goes on the rug and the Roborock also has this feature. So typically the more expensive robot vacuums have this feature, see how it goes down once it detects the floor and then once it's starting to go back up, it actually lifts that thing back up, which is really, really nice. So that's one of the benefits you get with both of these vacuums. So this is what the Eufy Clean app looks like for the E25, it maps out your house. You can actually change out the map if you want to. You could rotate it if you want to. You could basically you know, add a no-go zone or remove a no-go zone. So you could say like, oh, I don't want the vacuum to go here, for instance. You could resize it to whatever you want. You press the check mark, it saves it, and it doesn't go there. You can also reset that in the future as well. So see how it shows up over there. You can rename rooms, you can divide rooms. So it automatically maps out your place and then you get to decide what you want to call it. And then you could do a 3D map or you could do a 2D map. So it's basically, there's a whole bunch of options in here. And then if you go to um, normal, you could do the home. And this is basically your cleaning settings. So AI automation, you could say vacuum and mop or just vacuum. You could say cleaning intensity is fast or deep. Water level, I had it set to medium pretty much throughout the test. Uh, you could set it to low or you could set it to high. And then the section you could put on max or turbo or just quiet. So there's all those options. Now you can have it clean the entire house. You could clean, make it clean a room. So I could say, oh, I want you to do these two rooms. I could click start. Um, and then obviously you could pick different settings for different rooms, which is even cooler. Um, or you could do zone and I could basically say, okay, I want to do zone cleaning and I'm going to go here and put this here and I just wanted to go over the carpet basically, uh, resize it, resize it. There it is. And then I, again, I could pick my options that I want and then I just click start. And then it, the vacuum cleans itself, takes like a minute or something, and it starts cleaning. And then it's gonna go through this carpet basically. Few moments later. And the mops lifts up. The Roborock has a fairly similar interface where you could do the full house, you could do it by rooms, or you could do it by zones, basically. So if you go to full, vacuum and mop, these are your options. Suction power, the scrub intensity, and the route. And then you could do mop only if you wanted to, which I didn't see that as option on the Eufy. Uh, vacuum only, or customize. So for me, I usually just leave it on vacuum mop. And I mean, that's the reason why I got this thing. And then for rooms, you could select multiple rooms. 
Uh, in this case, there is no option uh, for each room, where the other one I saw an option for each one, you can actually customize it if you wanted to. And then um, you can go to zones, and then very similar to the other one where you could basically select a zone, and then you could you know press start and it'll come do it, and then very similar for the edit options basically, so map details, you could do 2D, you could do 3D as well. So there's a lot of uh, similar basically options, uh, obstacles, furniture and stuff, edit map, you could put no-go zones, all that other stuff. So very, very similar. I mean, the interface looks a little different, but in terms of the options, it is actually uh, pretty similar. So yeah, there it is. And then if I wanna do this zone, I basically would select this, resize it to what I want, and let's say I put it right around here, and I press play, and I'll come and do this. Few moments later. So this is what it looks like on the base station. We got the clean water tank right here. So you open this up, you'd basically pour the water in through that hole. You could see how much water you have. It is in the front, so it's fairly easy to see. Behind it, this thing actually came with a cleaning solution included in the box, which is nice. And then we have the dirty water tank in the back. And this is basically what you would empty out when you're done cleaning. So that's that. And then in here, there's a dust bag. And this is basically everything that um, once it vacuums, it basically sucks all that dirt, dust, and everything inside this dust bag right here that depending on how often you clean, how clean your house is and everything like that, but typically you change this out. In my house, I basically change this out every like three to four months or something. And yeah. And this is the base station for the Roborock. So basically we got the dust bag in here, very similar to the Yuffie. We got the clean water. This is basically where you pour in the clean water and then you just slide it right in. And this is where the dirty water goes, essentially. That's pretty much it. I had both robots clean the entire house, mop it, everything. And this is what the bottom of each one looks like. Now, it's mostly just the ketchup stains, really. You know, a whole lot of ketchup here, some ketchup here, some ketchup here. And um, the one thing with the Roborock, which is true for pretty much any robot vacuum that I've tested, is that hair does start to kind of get stuck on the sides right here and it starts to accum accumulate after a while. Now, it, it is nice that this new one's designed for that not to happen. So, I mean, this isn't like super hard to clean or anything like that. You basically just pull this out, take the hair out, pop it back in. But it is one less thing you would need to do on the Yuffie, which is right there. And hair does accum accumulate on the bristles as well on this one. And it looks like hair did accumulate a little bit on the bristles here as well. So it's still not like 100%, you know, there won't be any hair because it looks like the bristles got it. But let's, let's actually check if this part got it because it doesn't appear like it did. Yeah, I don't see any hair over here. No hair here. Um, some ketchup stains inside and let's check this one and uh, yeah it's pretty much no hair over here as well so it looks like this portion of it doesn't accumulate hair which is nice uh, but the bristles do have get a little bit of hair and stuff um, just like this one also would accumulate hair as well so this part of it is not um, tangle free with hair Granted, I think with these, I think you just pull these out. Yeah, so I just pull this out, take out the hair and pop it back in. Again, it's not super hard to do, but it is nice that at least this part you don't have to do it. Whereas with this one, it's not super hard to clean, uh, but it is nice that I would just need to do this. And, and technically this is easier where this one I do need to get a screwdriver to take this out to clean out the hair, but not a super big deal, but it is... Um, it is partly a bonus that hair doesn't get tangled in here. So there's that. So the mopping feature overall is better on the Yuffie because the foam brush is actively getting clean. And this, the Roborock, while it does get clean at the base station, it's not getting clean immediately. So there are some ketchup stains here. 
uh, where there's no ketchup stains on this. There are ketchup stains here and here, uh, but there's ketchup stains, you know, because it looks like it doesn't super clean this portion of it. Not that it's difficult. I would need to basically take this out and clean it myself. Um, but there's like one less thing. Every like one less thing kind of makes it a little, little bit better, basically. So to summarize, both of these robot vacs are very good at obstacle avoidance. Lifting the mops when they're going over a carpet or a rug and preventing falls if it detects it's on a higher floor. Now, the Roborock did beat it in terms of the rice suction test, so overall did do a better job there, and the Yuffie did do an overall better job of getting less hair, and less hair tangled, I should say, and really the biggest difference between these is the mopping feature on the Yuffie. It is legit next level, and the catch-up test made that very, very evident because it literally cleaned it after the first pass, where the Roborock was, it was still kind of cleaning, but it was more smearing than cleaning. And that was really the biggest differences between these robot vacs. So for someone like me that has vinyl flooring, that actually makes a huge difference for me because I'm using the mopping feature all the time. And I do use these robot vacuums all the time, which helps keeps the floors clean and helps save me a lot of time. So with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.